The Greatest Showman adventure for us started when we met Michael Gracie and he did one of his famous Michael Gracie pitches of this film, which I think have become legendary or legendary. will become legendary. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he walked us through the whole thing uh, and said, you know, this is what it's gonna look like, this is what it's gonna feel like. He showed us a mood reel, he showed us artwork, he pitched, you know, the film and the songs and even some of the lines that he had just come up with himself. Um, and his passion was so um, contagious and so real and visceral that it almost wouldn't have mattered what he was pitching. Just that that energy excited us to, to such a, a large degree. And then when we started thinking about this this world, it was a world of color and life and imagination and dreaming. Um, and the, the idea of telling a period story with contemporary music was sort of terrifying to us and we didn't quite get it, but we were like, that's a really interesting and intriguing challenge. So uh, I think we got so excited to play in the playground of what this, this story would become and what this world would become. Getting to try to um, create a, a, a score, both musically and lyrically, that take um, what we love and, and uh, artists that we love and, and um, all of those sort of inspirations and, and create something that serves character was really exciting for us. The actors were amazing. I mean, they were relentless. They would come in for three hour sessions at a time and like multiple sessions every week and just sing it again and again. We'd go line by line sometimes and get, it was all about just getting material, getting material, getting material. And then we, we went through, you know, with a fine tooth comb and really, you know, pulled out the best of the best of the best and, and to, to make those performances that really matched the energy that they were giving and really matched you know, exactly how they intended to sing those, so those lines. The most exciting part of, of seeing everything come to life was really seeing what Michael had in his head. And, and if we were able to fulfill that, that was really a joy to do. But then when all of the other elements came about and we got to see the sets, I mean, especially the, the Million Dream set, I remember walking into this this unbelievable abandoned house and there's just ivy growing and there's shadows and there's you know a bird cage and all these things that Michael had talked about or that he had made paintings or pictures of or that we had seen in pre-visualization and then it becomes real and that's the craziest thing I think as a writer you know you spend so much time in a room batting around ideas usually like your living room yeah. or your bedroom and just, <laughs> you know I mean? and just dreaming of what something could be and then all of a sudden you see masters who who it's their job to create what you have in your head and so often they do it better than you could have ever imagined it to be and so this has been a particularly amazing experience because any ideas that we had we got to see them uh, we got to see them come to life it lifted off the ground especially when Kayla Settle sang it for the first time um, she is an actress that we love and someone that we've respected for a really long time and and hearing her infuse the, these music and, and lyrics with the kind of emotion and heart that she brings to everything, um, but so committed to, to talking about um, and, and crying out for self-acceptance was one of the most moving experiences that I've ever had as a songwriter to, to see our work interpreted by, by, by someone that skilled and, and that full of heart. With these songs, Michael Gracie was was the editor. He really was the editor with a capital E. And and we'd place things for him, and he'd be like, "That sticks in my head. That doesn't." And he was, you know, he, he was really such a helpful partner and collaborator in that sense because he he always felt strongly. Look, it's not always the case with every story, with, with every musical we write, that it has to be. You know, we want to write catchy hooks. We want to write songs that stick in your head or memorable things. Michael really felt like I want this to be contemporary, and so I want there to be choruses that you feel like you return to, and they're like home base for the song and something I remember when the next morning he's like I want people to walk out of this movie theater remembering these songs and well, hopefully they will but you know he was the he was the he was the like the caretaker of that uh, priority